starts right now. A Texas judge putting a temporary hold on certain aspects of the state abortion ban. How this is going to affect many women with complicated pregnancies. Medications and heat, two things that might cause significant risk to your health. What health experts are saying about the connection between the two. And speaking of the heat, taking a live look out of the Alamo City, it is 78 degrees to start your weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. Good morning. Good morning. We're still getting ready this still morning. Still getting ready. That's good. <laughs> Love the hoops. Thanks. Good morning. Thank you for starting your weekend with us. It is 6 o'clock this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. You've been out and about? It, it's really hot. Uh, breaking news. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've been um, working all week and yeah. we've had some crazy breaking news and I was out in the heat yeah. and it hasn't hasn't been good. You've done a great job. The weekdays have done a great job, but obviously rising temperatures, huge demand on the power grid. ERCOT even going as far as issuing a weather watch for tomorrow and for Monday. Yeah, that's right. So uh, that again is for tomorrow and Monday. And so keep in mind that when ERCOT issues a weather watch, they're pretty much watching how the supply and the demand meet each other. Demand is expected to be high today, yes, but especially tomorrow and Monday. And you can see that supply, which is this blue line here, is going to become be close to the forecast demand, especially tomorrow. So we're going to be watching the grid closely, but the biggest thing to know is ERCOT does not expect expect any major impacts to the grids like brownouts or things like that. But that just means we're going to be watching the grid very closely tomorrow and Monday because again, it is hot. It is going to be hot not only for us in San Antonio, but across the state of Texas. And here's a look at your weekend forecast today. 105. We got up to 105 yesterday. Tomorrow. Wow, a degree cooler. 104 for the high on Sunday. So all in all, it is going to be very hot around San Antonio and fire danger is high. Anywhere you see the orange color here, that's where fire danger is high or very high. Very high out west toward Del Rio, high across areas in the hill country and in northern Bear County as well. In fact, many of you know there was a fire uh, and there still is a fire out near to Bulverde. And so coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about things that you can do to prevent fires today and we'll have an update on that fire as well. Max and Sarah. Sarah, speaking of that fire, fire crews working through the night to put out a grass fire, forcing people from their homes near Bulverde Road and TPC Parkway, leaving their houses last night. This morning, finally able to return home. The fire at last check, 80% put out. Officials say one home destroyed after the fire spread into a nearby neighborhood. Our Avery Everett was out late keeping track of the fire. She's going to have an update for us in the next half hour. Deliberations will continue Monday morning in the O.L. Wallace murder trial. The 19 year old is charged in the 2022 MLK Day shooting. Wallace is accused of killing a man and injuring four people at Santa's bar on the east side. The jury deliberated for several hours yesterday before being sent home for the weekend. Well, August marks 33 years since an 11 year old and a seven year old were abducted and killed. Now, Heidi abducted on August 4th, 1990, as she was walking home from a friend's house. Just weeks later, on August 23rd, 1990, Erica playing outside her west side apartment when she was taken. Both girls' bodies eventually found miles apart. Their case is deemed unrelated. No arrests have been made in either case. So San Antonio police, they're asking for your help. Asking if you have any information in this case, you're asked to call SAPD's cold case tip line. That number 210-207-7635. You can take a look back at both investigations right now. Just head to KSAT.com. All right, well, it's the heat. We've been talking about it for so long. And as these extreme heat conditions continue to grip our region, health experts urging everyone, especially those on medications, you have to take extra precautions. That's right. The combination of scorching temperatures and certain medications can pose significant risk to our health. Jonathan Gothel with why this is particularly true for those on allergy and high blood pressure meds. Staying safe and healthy is crucial for individuals taking medications, especially during the hot summer months. Health experts say it's essential to be aware of how the heat can interact with certain drugs, potentially leading to adverse side effects. 
So we're having some of our patients coming in with uh, some elevated blood pressure readings, which we can see blood pressure going a little bit high in the heat. Dr. Linu Samuel says in extreme heat conditions, the body's ability to regulate temperature can be severely compromised. This is particularly concerning for individuals who are on medications that affect the body's ability to sweat. And one common example, allergy meds. They reduce blood flow. And by reducing blood flow, that decreases our ability to sweat and our skin to thermoregulate. Other drugs like diuretics can further exacerbate dehydration, potentially leading to heat-related illnesses such as heat exhaustion or heat stroke. The best thing to do is is not necessarily stop them because those medications are being prescribed for a specific reason. Uh, but the best thing to do is continue those medications, make sure you're staying well hydrated, drinking plenty of water. It's essential to avoid direct sun exposure during peak heat hours, typically between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Seek shade whenever possible and wear lightweight, breathable clothing to help your body regulate its temperature. It's also advised to keep your medications in a cool area to ensure their effectiveness. There are also certain medications like insulin and insulin type products that would that require to be stored in a cool temperature like a refrigerator. So leaving those in your car it can be uh, can can damage those medications. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. A woman in Texas with complicated pregnancies will be temporarily exempt from the state's abortion ban. So a Texas judge, Jessica Mangrum, issued the temporary injunction Friday evening. A lawsuit was filed by the Center for Reproductive Rights on behalf of two doctors and 13 women who suffered complications in pregnancy. Lawyers for the state argued that there is an inadequate exception in the statute for life-threatening pregnancies. This temporary injunction, it's going to stand until the lawsuit is complete. It could be a while. That trial date scheduled for March 25th. Well, terrifying news out of Idaho. A crash reported yesterday injuring several children, leaving some in critical condition. The Idaho Transportation Department says that the crash caused all lanes in that area to be closed. The bus carrying children from a YMCA summer camp rolled over on a winding Idaho highway. Seven of the 11 children injured were in critical condition. All others on board taken to the hospitals to be checked out. Well, there was chaos at New York City's Union Square Friday as thousands of people gathered for a giveaway by a social media Twitch streaming star. The NYPD calling more than a thousand officers to respond in what the city is calling its highest level of disaster response. Police say people started committing acts of violence towards the police and public. Some people took items from a nearby construction site and were walking around with shovels and axes. The Twitch streamer is being charged with multiple counts. Well, the US job market is continuing to cool down, adding just 187,000 jobs in July. So all of this, the latest data released yesterday by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, it's less than the net gain of 200,000 jobs that economists were expecting and really hoping for. A cooling labor market is in line with the Federal Reserve's goal, and the July unemployment rate ticked down to 3.5% from 3.6%. Okay, there was no winner. The Mega Million jackpot has grown to over $1.5 billion. A potential record if someone wins the grand prize next week. So last night's numbers were 11, 30, 45, 52, 56 with a mega ball of 20. While nobody matched all of them, seven tickets across seven states won a million dollars each. Well, that's a nice little prize there. The next drawing is scheduled for Tuesday at 11 p.m. Eastern. You still plan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think our pool here at work is continuing. Just rolling over. I heard yeah. you guys won $24, so congratulations. No, thank you. you I think know. it's eight tickets, so, you know. It's a big deal. Big deal. Time now, just about 6.09, 78 degrees. Today on Texas Eats, David Ooh. Elder heads to Houston to try some wild waffle creations at the Waffle Bus. See, that just looks efficient. It's a chicken sandwich on waffles. Looks pretty good. It does. All right, as kids get ready to... Head back to school. A lot of drives happening this weekend. We're going to tell you about the latest one with the Last Chance Ministries, why they're now asking for your help. All right, 78 degrees at 609. It is going to be very, very hot for the next couple of days with that heat advisory. Sarah Spivey will let us know about it when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. New details this morning in a story we've been following. A couple weeks ago, we told you about Last Chance Ministries Back to School Bash. Well, the demand is still coming in and they're asking for your help. A record-setting number of families have registered for the bash. 
Now, they are anticipating 3,500 students and registration doesn't close until Monday. Kids are going to receive school supplies, new clothes, about 30 barbers and hairdressers also providing services. The pastor says the church is relying on its faith and donations to help students in and around our area. We're like 600 backpacks short still, and so if anybody wants to be a blessing, man, I've been saying we're going to close it since last week, but we keep it going. We're just trusting God that the community and the city will come together and continue to pour into, you know, continue to bring backpacks and stuff, and we don't want to leave any kid out. The Back to School Bash is next Saturday, August 12th at Rosedale Park, and registration is open to students from, K, from kindergarten through college. And if you would like to help, Last Chance Ministries is accepting donations. You can see those items on your screen right now that they need. We have all this information about how to donate and register on ksat.com. Just look for this story on the homepage. Sarah, I cannot believe kids are going to be going back to school in the next I couple know. of weeks. And it's going to still be so hot for them. It really is. Especially for the football practices that already started. I don't know how the kids are doing it, to be honest with you. Yeah, we are about to enter into a very long stretch of 105 Ooh. degree weather, mm -hmm. at least for the next five to 10 days, guys. Wow. And it's hard to see an end in sight. But one thing I want to focus on is how high fire danger is. Okay, so what I'm showing you right now is a satellite picture of Texas from from June 11th. So right after we got some decent rains in uh, May and in early June. Now watch what happens as I slide this over. Notice how the foliage just becomes so brown. This is a look at today. So this is the June 11th and yesterday in the afternoon. You can see just how dried out the vegetation has become. That vegetation acting as fuel for uh, any potential fires. So know that across the state of Texas, fire danger is either high or very high. And that does include our viewing area here. Now out toward Del Rio, that's where we've got very high fire danger in Rock Springs and Brackettville. Now, anywhere you see this orange, that's where fire danger is high. It includes the hill country, it includes the winter garden region, out toward Gonzales. Fire danger a little less around the city of San Antonio, but still pretty high because of all the vegetation. And again, you notice that the, the high fire danger dips down into the northern part of Bear County. That's actually where we did have a fire uh, that started yesterday, dubbed the Sendero Fire, 10 acres plus burned. It's now 80% contained. So basically it, it's mostly contained. There's just a few hot spots that they're looking out for. And just to get you a better picture of where this is, it's inside of Bulverde Road uh, and 281 there on the northeast side of town, north of Evans Road and north of TPC Parkway. Unfortunately, a home was destroyed from this fire yesterday. We'll continue to keep you posted, and we have more from our Avery Everett coming up in the next half hour here. But just to give you an idea of things to really watch out for, fire danger is high today. We'll have winds from the southeast at 10 to 15. Absolutely no campfires or burn piles. Avoid using tools that create sparks. Dispose of cigarettes properly. Don't just flick them out of your vehicle and don't drag trailer chains and don't uh, park vehicles on grass. That is important to know. Now looking ahead to today, it's 79 degrees outside right now. Have clear skies and we've got winds from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. This is the coolest part of the day. 79 in Castroville, 72 in Rio Medina. Good morning in Bandera at 75, 75 in Kerrville and it's 80 in Canyon Lake. And looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, we are going to warm up very quickly. Around 10 will be at 86. Noon already in the low 90s and then in the afternoon 105 for the high temperature this afternoon right around 5 6 p.m. Here's a look at neighborhood highs out to the west. It's going to be 108 in Del Rio 105 in Gonzales 104 in Canyon Lake 102 in Kerrville 105 Castroville 104 Converse 105 Seguina New Braunfels 107 Pleasanton 106 Floresville. Now as we look at the weather setup Central Plains is getting some rain, but that heat high is still 
big in control around San Antonio and Texas. And so as we look at the forecast over the next several days, highs are going to range anywhere from 103 to 106. And again, unfortunately, no, no end in sight for us. There is some small hope that by this time next weekend, we could be dealing with temperatures a few degrees cooler, maybe even some rain, but it is too soon to tell. Uh, I'll show you more about the long term weather pattern coming up in the next. Oh, just like bracing. I know. I know it's going to be really hot this week in spite of the fact that afternoon humidity will be low. Thanks, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. Spark of optimism. <laughs> Time now just about 618, 78 degrees. Another amazing image from NASA's James Webb Telescope. What it's captured this time and what makes it so vibrant. And on today's episode of Texas Eats, David Elder taking us to Houston. Getting a taste of craziness. Look at this. I mean, this just looks like it's efficient. Carbs on carbs. Need it. <laughs> one right here. This is what you're known for. This is how it all got yeah, started, that's right? That's our uh, buttermilk fried chicken and waffle, uh, fresh made waffle, uh, chicken breast, uh, buttermilk brine for over 24 hours with our special sauce, which is a uh, thunder sauce. It's a mix of spicy mayo and ancho chili honey butter. Ooh, super tender. Look at that cross section right there. That <laughs> looks fantastic. Cheers to cheers, you. Cheers. All right, <laughs> that's the chicken and waffle sandwich. Here's a bite. <laughs> Bro, that's it right there. Messy, it's delicious, give me some love. <laughs> the OG chicken and waffle sandwich is so good. Great flavor on there. You have that crunch on the outside of the waffle, nice and tender on the inside. The chicken, I mean brine, so much flavor on the inside of that as well. You have that sauce that they're making in-house. All that put together makes for an incredible bite. What are we thinking? I don't know, it's, just, it, it's almost too much. What? Okay. So, I know you're a huge fan of mustard, huge fan of Skittles. Mm -hmm. Today, National Mustard Day. Happy National Mustard Happy Day Happy National there. Mustard Day. They have that collaboration. We still need the to order. Skittles. We need to order the mustard we Skittles and we're going to try them on there. Yep. Yeah. We're doing that during the break. Deal. Okay. I'm now just about 623, 76 degrees. Coming up next, a first look at what scientists at the European Space Agency have captured and why they say these images are promising for future expectations. Morning, welcome back. All right, take a look at your screens. Look at that. First images from the Euclid Space Telescope. These are preliminary test shots showing a few galaxies. So scientists at the European Space Agency, they have big plans for this spacecraft. They hope to create the largest ever 3D map of the sky, revealing more about unknown parts of the universe. The Euclid project manager says these initial images, well, they suggest the telescope could exceed even their expectations. And the James Webb Telescope captured this stunning image a, of a ring nebula, something that has been studied for years. The planetary nebula is home to the remnants of a dying star as it releases the bulk of its mass. The star's radiation interacts with the elements that have already been released, causing them to glow. It's beautiful. Each chemical element creates a specific color, allowing astronomers to study the evolution of the star. You want to talk about it? Talk about what? UFOs. We've been talking about aliens. The possibility of aliens. I believe. I, I believe in it. The proceedings were streamed on uh, C-SPAN. <laughs> 627, 78 degrees. A new medication just got approved by the FDA to help mothers dealing with postpartum depression. We'll tell you all about it coming up. Good morning, welcome back. Happy weekend. It is 6.30 this Saturday morning. Happy Saturday. It's going to be another another hot one, and we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a minute. But first, fire crews worked overnight to check on hot spots after a grass fire near Bulverde Road and TPC Parkway. So officials report one house destroyed after the fire spread into a nearby neighborhood. Our Avery, Avery Everett spoke with neighbors who say with how dry it's been this summer, this fire comes as no surprise. The smoke was very heavy, very dark. A neighborhood on watch tonight after a grass fire near TPC Parkway spread more than 10 acres. The wind had shifted and drove the fire towards the neighborhood here. Nearly 50 homes evacuated, one destroyed. We brought as many trucks as fast as we could get here, but it got ahead of us. 
No one was hurt. It took six hours for crews to contain that fire. Firefighters have to deal with elevation, thick brush. Evacuations have since been lifted. Patrick Donahue says his neighborhood is lucky it didn't spread further. The properties out here, which are encouraged to stay natural, which means a lot of fuel for fires. With conditions under control, crews will still work overnight to treat hot spots. The rescue teams are just all over. It gives you a lot of confidence. As of late last night, fire marshals were still investigating what exactly caused this fire to start. As soon as we learn that, we'll keep you updated on KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, and fire danger is not only high uh, in San Antonio, but across the state of Texas. Take a look at fire danger from the Texas A&M Forest Service. Anywhere you see orange, fire danger is either high or very high. That includes the northern San Antonio area where that Bullfordy Road fire took place. And uh, another reason for the, the fire danger is because it is just going to be so hot. Excessive heat warnings and heat advisories in effect for most of Texas today, including here in San Antonio in the metro area. Anywhere you see this pink, that's where we have excessive heat warning. That means uh, it's going to be even hotter. A forecast high of 105 in the San Antonio heat advisory elsewhere. And here's a look at today's forecast. Southeast winds at 5 to 15, so be very careful. Avoid creating and spreading fires. Uh, one big way you could do that is to dispose of cigarettes properly and try not to park grass, uh, park uh, the car on grass. And take a look at temperatures by noon. It's going to be 93, 105 for the high temperature today. That will likely be to record and we will be uh, battling record highs for the next five to seven days. Details on a toasty forecast ahead. Max and Sarah. Uh, new this morning, San Antonio police searching for suspects in a shooting on the city's north side. Take a look. This is what we know right now. Police tell us this happened just before one this morning. It all stemmed from a fight that broke out at a bar across the street of the Fountain Wood Drive near O'Connor Road. A man shot twice in the stomach, once in the shoulder. Police say the suspects who shot him took off. Right now, no information on that getaway vehicle. The condition of the victim, we are still waiting to hear back. We do expect updates through the morning, so stay with us on air and online. One attorney is taking the city to court after what he calls the city's new proactive apartment inspection program a fine-driven purgatory. The city started the new program in April, charging complexes for additional inspections after getting three designated citations within six months. This leads to a property being labeled a bad actor. In return, they'll have to register with the city and get extra monthly inspections for at least half a year and pay an annual fee of $100 per unit. A lawsuit has since been filed asking for the new program to be tossed out. To read more about this story, just head over to ksat.com. Well, there's now a new treatment for those in the United States experiencing postpartum depression. The U.S. FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, approving a pill to treat this illness. Now, the drug makers say phase three trials showed results with women with severe postpartum depression given the new medication called Zuranolone, and it had a significant improvement on depressive symptoms. Now, researchers say Symptom relief was seen in as early as three days. Side effects have been reported from the trial that includes drowsiness and even dizziness. The fall respiratory virus season is approaching and major pharmacies in the U.S. are now setting up flu and RSV vaccine appointments. So they're also getting ready to see a rise in COVID cases and medical experts say one reason for this rise, many are avoiding the outdoors to beat the grueling summer heat. Health officials are advising people to prepare themselves for the fall to see the rise in these cases. Pfizer officials say they expect to have a COVID shot ready for the public sometime next month. And a heartbroken woman desperate to find her dog says she's quickly become the target of scammers. It's a terrifying situation. Patty Santos explains why this woman is now warning other pet owners in our area against mistakes that put her safety at risk. So what they usually do is they'll come down this hill right here. They're country dogs. We've been here for over two and a half years. Carolyn Kale says her two Labradors went for a dip in the nearby creek and never came back. Normally, if they've ever gotten away from this area, somebody will see them. 
she did what most desperate pet owners do, posted flyers with her pictures. I first put out a sign that said cash reward. But that's when things, she says, got weird. I have some people calling me saying they have my dogs and it's an obscure time of the evening and they want me to go meet them somewhere to go pick them up. I live as she got multiple texts and calls of people who wanted to claim the cash reward and claim they had the dogs. One even said they worked for the city of San Antonio Animal Care Services. I didn't send anybody else any money um, because I had read about these things. So be very wary of anybody who's asking for money before they're able to uh, turn over your pet. Or Lisa Norwood with pet. Animal Care Services your warns pet. people to safeguard information about their pets and themselves when posting a missing pet flyer. Don't include an actual 100% description of your pet. Norwood says don't include the names of the pets, locations, your full name, or the exact reward amount. It's been 24 days since Kale's dogs disappeared and her flyers all over town are almost sun faded, but not her hope. I don't know what happened to them, but I will not give up. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. All right, if you're a Wells Fargo user, listen up. A glitch affecting Wells Fargo direct deposits yesterday caused the limited number of customers to be affected. So if this did affect you, you are not alone. KSAT reached out to the bank. They emailed a statement saying, quote, the vast majority has been resolved and the few remaining issues will be resolved soon. We sincerely apologize for any inconvenience, end quote. Now, customers who are still having issues this morning, you are asked to contact the bank directly. One local school district is taking a new tactic to staff its classrooms, rehiring teachers who have already retired. So Northside ISD has 233 teacher vacancies as of today, but it already hired 23 retired teachers on a one year contract. The district is trying to make an offer to retirees they can't refuse. A retired individual who is eligible now to be rehired, they continue to receive their annuity, they receive their salary from Northside, they will also receive that retention payment of $1,200. These teachers will also receive the district's recent 3% pay raise. Those eligible must have been retired for at least one year and meet all district qualifications. Northside schools return to class on August 28th. So from a teacher shortage to a nursing shortage, a new addition to San Antonio aims to help with our state's nursing shortage. The Southside Education and Training Center is going to host Palo Alto's College's nursing program. Now the $23 million building, it's also going to offer adult education, literacy classes, and even workforce training programs. The training center, it's a partnership between Palo Alto and Southside ISD. It was paid for by a 2017 Alamo College's bond package. A ribbon cutting is scheduled for next weekend. All right, Max, are you ready? I am so ready. It's still my cover photo from last year. <laughs> it's so much fun. So now is the time to get your tickets to this year's 2023 KSAT Pigskin Classic. One of high school football's biggest events is even bigger than last year because we've added an extra night of football. Look at those picks. Right. We're stars. Stars. Okay, the two-day event starts with one game on Friday, August 25th. Then three games on Saturday, August 26. Tickets are on sale now. If you're a KSAT Insiders, you can get the VIP experience with the best seats in the house. Just open up your camera app on your phone, scan this QR code on your screen for more information, head to KSAT.com. And you and Sarah really were stars last year. Sarah Spivey knocked in like a 40-yard field goal. Y'all, we and had so much yards. fun. You had like a 40-yard touchdown pass. You even did a little Gronk spike. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. So make sure you watch us. at four. We, we do like the pre-game yep. pep rally for on GMSA. Never been part of a pep rally before. This is very exciting. You were last. It was a pep rally. Yeah. Okay. It was It was an unintentional pep rally, and this year I'm calling it a pep rally. That's fair. All right. <laughs> we got to get a graphic for that one. Time now. It's just about 641, 78 degrees. Oh, my gosh. The Bears on social media, Max. Undefeated. <laughs> so the Bears, I mean, it's all about the Bears on social media. Or are they Bears? <laughs> are they Bears? From break-ins to California to people thinking the bear at a zoo is dressed as a human. I don't know. Look at that. It's back. It's very, it's very sus. All right. We'll tell you about both those incidents next. We're also going to tell you about the weather. Like oh. we're trying to avoid this topic. You can you can almost see the heat out there. 
It's going to be a doozy these next few days. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey, tell you how bad it's going to be. Morning, welcome back. All right. <laughs> We've been talking about this for about Look a week Look at your now. screen right now. <laughs> Look at the screen. This is a zoo in eastern China, and all week they've been trying to reassure visitors and people on social media that their sun bears are <laughs> not humans dressed in costumes. A video oh of God. the bear went viral on social media. The bear does look like a human, and it appears to wave at the crowd. Its fur appears to be loose and wrinkled at certain spaces, almost like it's an ill-fitting bear suit. It is a sun bear, which is the world's smallest bear species. In a statement, the zoo insists people just don't understand their behavior. Maybe the bear lost weight and has loose skin. Mm. That happens in animals, too. It does. Okay, well, okay. this bear needs to lose some weight. <laughs> Here's another bear story. Authorities finally have the culprit in custody, they believe, was behind nearly two dozen home break-ins in California. He's eaten well. They say it's, or she, excuse Jeez. me. This is a large female black bear nicknamed Hank the Tank. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> According to wildlife <laughs> biologists for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, the bear and her three cubs were safely mobile, um, immobilized on Friday. They say DNA confirmed the bear was behind wow. at least, Real well, DNA <laughs> samples. They're not messing around. At least 21 home break-ins and even brought her three young cubs on some of those break-in adventures. This is a serial burglar. It's Ma Barker. Right you know there. what? Mama yeah. bears, don't mess with them. Serial burglar. <laughs> I had to wow, drop a dad Matt. joke, right? Come on. I was waiting for someone. That may be the first joke I've ever heard Max Max We're doing it. Tell. Well, you know what, Sarah? It's going to be very hot out today. Ew. Yeah, but I'm Keep oh, boy. going. I'm not going to stop. And on a serious note, we do need to try to avoid uh, creating and spreading fires. High grass fire danger today, Saturday. Uh, winds will be from the southeast, breezy, 10 to 15 miles per hour. So do not have any campfires or burn piles out there. Avoid using tools that create sparks like chainsaws and the like. Dispose of cigarettes properly. This is very important to make sure you throw away cigarettes properly. Do, do not drag trailer chains and do not park vehicles on grass. These are all ways that fires can start and get out of control in the dry and hot conditions we expect not only here in San Antonio but across Texas today. As we look at the weather setup, it's quiet around Texas. There are some severe storms where their way through the central plains, but these are on the north side of that heat high, which is firmly in place. Dome of a high pressure pushing down, compressing the air and increasing the heat. Take a look at forecast highs around this heat high today. 113 in Phoenix, 106 in El Paso, 105 San Angelo, 105 here in San Antonio. And a big portion of the southwest south is going to be under the influence of that heat high today. Also similar story tomorrow too, where highs across the state of Texas will be hot. It could be 107 up in Dallas, Fort Worth, but at least Dallas, Fort Worth has a chance for rain this week. As we head into Monday, there's going to be a front that stalls across North Texas. Unfortunately, it will not make it to San Antonio. We're still going to be hot on Monday at 105, but parts of North Texas will at least get a chance for some rain. That heat high, though, stays uh, pretty dominant in the coming days, and uh, because of that, we're going to have near record heat once again every Every single day this week. Today, we're likely to beat a record set back in 2013. Our forecast high is 105. The record is 104. We'll be close to the record uh, tomorrow, and we will likely beat a record Monday, Tuesday, possibly tying a record Wednesday as well. So very hot weather in our near future for us for at least seven days. 79 degrees outside right now. This is the time you want to get out and do some errands. If you have to do any errands outside, get the yard work done right now. Try to get that walk in uh, early this morning, especially if you have pups. Do not walk them during the peak heat of the day. 84 degrees in Del Rio. You know it's going to be hot when you're starting at 84, and that's what they're doing out in Del Rio. 76 in Pleasant and 77 in New Braunfels. In your case, that 12-hour forecast, 84 at 9, 86 at 10, sunny, 93 at noon. And then in the afternoon, we'll be in the triple digits, 105 for the high temperature today, right around 5 o'clock. Sunsets closer to 830. Here's a look at neighborhood highs. Our average high temperature this time of year is 97. This is the hottest part of the year 
serve for us. And it's going to be even hotter than that. 105 in San Antonio, 105 in Sabinal, 106 in Floresville, 102 in Kerrville, and 105 in New Braunfels and Seguin. If there's anything positive about the forecast, at least in the afternoon, it is not going to be humid. Dew points will be in the 50s. That means no heat index value out there this afternoon for us. But still, when it's 105, you don't really need a heat index value for it to be hot out there. And it's hard to imagine, but, uh, you know, today's forecast, you can pretty much copy and paste it in the next seven days. I mean, it is going to be near 105 every single day. Okay, so it's August 5th. At what point in August, September, do we see maybe it going, getting away from those triple digits traditionally? Yeah, so our average last 100 degree day is August 26th. So we've still got some time before the average last 100 degree day. Last year, our last 100 degree day was August 13th. Okay. And it was still hot. So, yeah. you know, it could happen at any point, but not over the next seven days. 20 days. Yeah. Ish, 20 ish, ish days. Ish. To the average. To <laughs> the like average. 99. <laughs> Our latest, though, do you want to hear that? Mm. Our latest was September 28th. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Not cool. Thanks, Sarah. Time now just about 651, 78 degrees. Your last minute back to school shopping this weekend. Prices may be high coming up next on 12 on your sides. Marilyn Moritz shows us some ways to shop smart with this year's back to school supplies. Notebooks, markers, rulers, crayons, and we're just getting started. A backpack, glue sticks, pencils, colored pencils. Jackson Bovey has quite the list for sixth grade. His sister, too. Mom, she's doing the math. I would say 500 to 1,000. Ouch. That's typical. The retail industry says homes with kids K through 12 will spend an average $890 for back to school, 25 more than last year. Even before school starts, we did some homework, curious to see if inflation had hit the supplies aisle. And good news, most prices were the same as last year. A box of crayons, still 50 cents. We shopped a third grade list, getting name brand where specified. Otherwise, we went for the lowest price on the shelf. HEB was the bargain, $17.45. And bonus, there's a coupon, $5 off 25. Walmart was just a few cents more, and Target, $20.25. Every dollar counts, so how can you save? Well, first, shop your house. You may have glue left from last year, and shop store brands. For many families, electronics are the big expense. I think a really slept on way to save is getting open box or refurbished electronics. Kristen McGrath with Retail Me Not says buy from a reputable retailer with buyer protections and buying new, ask for student discounts. Then there's clothing. It's too hot for fall fashion. So and summer clothing is heading towards the clearance racks. So take advantage of that. A couple more notes. Use online tools that find coupons and give you cash back on your purchases. Shop tax-free weekend, August 11th through 13th. And for extra credit, sharpen your own pencils. Pre-sharpened can cost twice as much. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Time now, just about 6.56, 78 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, this is the coolest part of the day, 78 in San Antonio, but 75 in Kerrville's, 83 in Del Rio. Now looking at the forecast for the day, it's pain. 93 at noon, 105 for the high, all sunshine, southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Keep in mind that high fire danger will be present today and tomorrow. It is very hot. It is very dry, and the winds are not necessarily going to be calm. They're not going to be super breezy except for in the evening hours but still it's something that we have to keep our eye on and make sure you do your part uh, to avoid grass fires starting them and spreading them and then look at this forecast mm. over the next several days i know i know 105 monday tuesday wednesday oh we get hotter thursday wow 106 it is really hard for us to see a a concrete end to this heat right now there is some hope that this time next weekend we could shave off a few degrees, maybe introduce a rain chance. But that's a big maybe at this point. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. So important. Be safe. Hydrate. Shade. Don't be stupid. <laughs> All right. Bye. We're going to take an hour-long break for GMA. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you guys at 8.
Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. All right, we have been closely following that fire on Bolverde Road that took firefighters almost an entire day and night to put out. At last check, 80% controlled. We're going to have a big update. And several roads are closed the weekend. We'll tell you which streets to avoid. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, we talked about the fire, but obviously the heat and those conditions out and about. It's a big story of the weekend. 100 degree day after 100 degree day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for a forecast in just a few moments. For now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Saturday. It is August 5th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good so, morning. Have you just been avoiding the outside after like 11 a.m.? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably the best plan, to it's, be honest. It's also very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of days ago, I was outside for a shoot, and I think I got a little heat exhaustion, Sarah. It, it's it's the point where you need to be careful. Yeah, absolutely. And it sneaks up on all of us. You know, we are used to this heat by this point, but all it takes is for it to catch you off guard for a little bit. So please use caution today. Not only hot here in San Antonio, but across the state of Texas. Here's a look at the forecast highs versus the record highs. So we're forecasting 105 today. That'll beat a record of 104 in San Antonio. Look out toward Del Rio forecast high of 108, likely going to beat a record of 105. So a lot of folks around Texas deal Dealing with that record heat today. Also, I got a note, it's the coolest part of the day right now. So if you have any uh, chores to do outside, maybe some yard work, now is the time. It's only 80 degrees. It's a little humid, but it's just going to get hotter from here on out. 105 for the high temperature today, 104 tomorrow, a brutally hot weekend for us. High fire danger, very important to note. Fire danger is high, not only for San Antonio, but especially up in parts of the hill country. Coming up in the forecast, we are going to talk about the high fire danger, a little bit of detail on the Bulverde Road fire uh, that's up on the northwest side, northeast side rather, of the county. And we'll have a look at what you can expect, how long this uh, press of heat will last coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Sarah, thank you. Major road closure alert for those who drive near Loop 410 and the I-10 interchange. The west and southbound lanes will be closed until Monday at five in the morning, TxDOT says there is a detour route that is open, but avoid the area altogether if possible. And the story we've been following very closely for the last 24 hours, fire crews working through the night, trying to put out a grass fire, forcing people who live near Bulverde Road and TPC Parkway to evacuate their homes. So this morning, those people finally returning home. At last check, the fire 80% contained. Officials say one home was destroyed after the fire spread into a nearby neighborhood. Our Avery Everett was out late keeping track of that fire. We're actually going to have a photographer out there, a photojournalist, Alexis, out there. We expect more information throughout the morning. Well, a Texas judge issuing a temporary order to allow those who are dealing with complicated pregnancies an exemption from the state's abortion ban. So this comes after a lawsuit was filed by the Center for Productive Rights on behalf of two doctors and 13 women who had life-threatening issues during their pregnancies. Lawyers for the state argued that there was an appropriate exception when having those life-threatening emergencies. However, the temporary order will stand until the lawsuit is complete, and that could be a while. The trial date is scheduled for March 25th. LGBTQ plus Texans have filed a federal lawsuit to block a new state law that criminalizes drag shows if they occur in front of children. So the plaintiffs represented by the American Civil Liberties Union of Texas argue that Senate Bill 12 violates the first and 14th amendments because the law, quote, discriminates against content and viewpoints of performances and imposes prior restraint on free expression, end quote. In addition to the Acting Attorney General LGBTQ plus groups are suing the District Attorney of Bear County. Well, Texas A&M set to pay $1 million to journalism professor Kathleen McElroy in a settlement after pushback to her hiring led to the school to water down the offer. So Dr. McElroy was going to be the new director of journalism school at Texas A&M until complaints surfaced about her previous writings on issues relating to race. According to A&M's internal review, the university then changed the job offer from a three-year deal to a one-year deal, and that also excluded tenure. And speaking of Texas A&M, former NFL quarterback and former Aggie Johnny Manziel opening up more and more about his struggles with mental health after his release from the Cleveland Browns back in 2016. 
Johnny Manziel talked in the Netflix documentary Untold that he attempted to end his life after what he called a $5 million bender. The former Heisman Trophy winner said he began using several different types of drugs every day after being diagnosed with bipolar disorder after the 2015 season. Manziel said that he flew from Los Angeles to Texas to spend time with his family after the incident. A doctor in Dallas has been raising money for cancer patients through a musical therapy program. So Dr. Michelle Nichols is currently in stage four breast cancer and decided she wanted to have a benefit concert at her house in Dallas for people just like her with artists whose songs had a meaningful moment in her life. Her husband contacted one of his friends that's huge on TikTok, and 2.2 million views later, eight out of the 12 artists said yes. It gives me a lot of hope and a lot of encouragement. And in a dark time, you can either affect people in a good way or not. So, I mean, some of these artists are huge, like Bob Dylan and others will be performing at that concert. So we always talk about the negatives of social media, but here it really was used for such a good reason. Love that. All right, time now, 806, 79 degrees. David Elder heads to, I love Max and Louis. <sighs> Me too. Oh, Max Great and Louis, the too. New York diner on the north side to check out an unbelievable brunch food challenge. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Look at that, tower of greatness. All right. Also speaking of greatness, San Antonio Food Bank do so much to help our community. They are getting our families ready for the first day of school. We're going to tell you some of the items that they are reaching out to the community, asking for you to donate. If you have to do anything today outside, try to do it early because the heat is going to be dangerous for the next couple of days. Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. Morning and welcome back. So as we get ready to head back to school, a lot of families in and around our area, they need some help. And the San Antonio Food Bank is always looking for more and more donations. So while kids will be getting meals at school, they, the need is still there to make sure no child goes hungry due to the increased demand in food for families around the Alamo City. The San Antonio Food Bank's warehouse has seen its inventory just dwindle down over the summer. San Antonio Food Bank CEO Eric Cooper tells us donations make a big difference. We could really use some donations, and that could be either food or funds. Um, for every $1 we take in, we can put out 10 pounds of food or seven meals. But you can also donate a non-perishable food item that goes a long way, and that'll help stock our shelves as we get ready for the fall season. So one item that they're always looking for, peanut butter. Obviously other items, rice, beans, soups, especially as we get ready for the fall season. And we have a full list on KSAT.com, but we talk to Eric Cooper all the time. And that demand for the summer is so important. And of course, as families get ready into the school year, you know, if you can step up and help out, I know that there are donation stations, so many different places. And of course, you can always just go right to the food bank. Absolutely. I mean, we also talked about fall briefly there, and I was like, it can't come soon, soon, enough. soon enough. Fall is seven weeks away. But okay. Exactly. But we've got 10 days of triple digit weather. At least. At least. For it's us. like at the end of a marathon, you know, it's like the hardest that those last yes, couple exactly. of miles. That's where, get over that's the where hump. we are. We got to get over the hump. Part of that is fire danger. Okay. Mm. Fire danger is high today. This is a great graphic that shows how dried out uh, the vegetation across Texas has uh, become. So take a look at your screen here. Uh, what I'm going to show you right now is what uh, Texas looked like on June 11th. So after we had seen some decent rains in May and early June, we had lush green foliage. Then watch what happens as I slide this over to yesterday's satellite image. Notice how brown the uh, state of Texas becomes here. This light brown color is all of the foliage that is dried out. And all of that foliage acts as fuel for fires. And unfortunately, fire danger is high today, uh, not only locally around San Antonio, but across the state of Texas. Anywhere you see the dark orange color up to Waco, Dallas, out toward Del Rio, that is very high fire danger. Uh, orange is a high fire danger that dips down into the hill country and encompasses much of the Winter Garden region. And as I zoom in here to the San Antonio metro area, the northern part of Bear County, closer to Bulverde, Bernie, up toward Kerrville Canyon Lake, that's where fire danger is the 
highest out toward Gonzales and Hallettsville as well. But I want to focus for a second on the northeast section of Bear County. Yesterday we had the, a fire develop 10 plus acres burned is now 80% contained. There's still some hot spots and we've actually got a case at photographer on the way over there to see if we can find out any more information. But just to give you a good idea where this is, it's inside Bulverde Road to the east of 281. And unfortunately, one home was destroyed from this. Now, much improved condition to yesterday, and we'll continue to keep you updated on that. But I wanted to give you an update that yes, fires can happen and they can spread rapidly when uh, we have the conditions we do. So keep in mind that winds today will be from the southeast breezy at times 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's some things to remember. Do not have any campfires or burn piles. Avoid using tools that create sparks like chainsaws. This one is big. Dispose of cigarettes properly. Make sure they are fully extinguished. Don't drag trailer chains and finally do not park vehicles on grass that could easily spark a fire. It's 80 degrees outside right now. This is the coolest part of the day. Get some work done this morning if you need to outside 78 in New Braunfels. Good morning in Hondo. It's 77, 74 in Bandera, 75 in Kerrville and 79 at Stinson. Looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast again, impressively quick warm up here for us. We're at 80 right now. We're going to be at 90 in just the next couple of hours, 93 at noon and then in the afternoon, triple digits 105 for the high that will likely beat a record set back in 2013 of 104 for the day. And again, winds at times could be breezy from the southeast up to 15 miles per hour. Here's a look at those neighborhoods scorching high temperatures. 108 in Del Rio and Eagle Pass, 107 Catula, 104 Canyon Lake, 102 Kerrville, 107 in Pleasanton. Neighborhood views, our average high this time of year is 97. This is the hottest part of the year, but we're going to be some 7 to 10 degrees degrees above the average high today. 102 in a Lotus, 105 Castroville, 105 in New Braunfels and 105 in Seguin. Although there's some rain across the central plains that is going to stay to the north because this heat high is firmly in control. So as we look at the forecast over the next several days, nothing but the heat triple digit temperatures. 105 is the, going to be the normal forecast for us the next seven days. There is some Hope that we could shave off a few degrees and maybe introduce a rain chance by this time next weekend, but it is still too far away to know for sure. And we've seen our weather pattern change to this heat high just remaining dominant. Coming up in the forecast, I've got to look at the pollen count, the only silver lining I think in in the forecast for us. Okay, you said what was the day that we at, that the we on average see the triple digits? On average, our last 100 degree day is August 26th. That's average. The summer is anything but average. But keep in mind that last year, even though we saw 58 100 degree days, our last 100 degree day was August 13th. Oh, so it was before the average. So you never know when we're going to see our last 100 degree day. OK, that makes me a little hopeful. I know. Who knows? Thank you, Sarah. 816, 79 degrees. Start of August means the start of football season. We'll have a closer look at what KSAT is offering this year with KSAT's Pigskin Classic. All right, obviously a lot of people looking for those lottery numbers. No Mega Millions jackpot winner. We're going to break those numbers down in a second. But first, we've seen a lot of people get success from scratch-offs here. Yeah. A couple million dollar winners. Do you, scratch, do you play the scratch-offs? I, I, no, not anymore because I've never won anything. <laughs> That's fair. All right, if you did play, here are your numbers. Pick three, five, six, seven, fireball seven. Daily four, two, four, seven, four, fireball four. I have started playing cash five. Don't sleep on cash five. They're only one dollar tickets. All right, one, sixteen, seventeen, twenty-two, thirty-three. Mega millions max. What is the jackpot now? One point five. Now up to one point five. Wow. Eleven, thirty, forty-five, fifty-two, fifty-six. Mega ball twenty. Mega plier two. All right, it is just this time of year. I'm so excited. It's funny because my cover photo on Facebook is the photo of us three from last year. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. I can't believe it's already been a year. So we are talking about the KSAT Pigskin Classic. This year's 2023 KSAT Pigskin Classic, one of high school football's biggest events ever. Look at that, we even made a, I don't get a lot of promos here. So Look, the fact that I made it in that one. I'm in a promo too. You're in like six of these photos. This is fantastic. All right. <laughs> It is bigger and better than last year. We even added an extra night of football. That's right. 
The two-day event starts with one game on Friday, August 25th, then three games Ooh. on Saturday, August 26th. Tickets are on sale now. If you're a KSAT insider, you can get the VIP experience with the best seats in the house. So make sure you scan this code, sign up to be a KSAT insider. And for all that information, you can also head to KSAT.com. We were kind of like the pep rally, let's mm. get excited for the You did the have game. the gold pom-poms. We will be live out mm -hmm. there again, uh, getting everyone pumped up for all the coverage. We're also getting our cast members pumped up too. We had the whole crew out there. Yeah. You just saw the videos. You had RJ, John Paul, Lee. We had the whole squad out there. Everyone will be out. I think every employee that works at KSAT yeah. will be there. And, and the cool so part was fun. every game was so competitive and really came down to like the last few seconds. These are high school kids playing in the Alamo Dome yeah. at the beginning of their season. You know, usually that doesn't happen until like a playoff game. Yeah. Or, so it's, it's a really awesome opportunity. Yeah. Time now, 822, 80 degrees. You're getting hungry. David Elder takes us to Max and Louie's, one of my favorite New York diner spots here in San Antonio. We're gonna tell you about the brunch challenge. So these are our famous pancakes, totally, totally from scratch. I love it. So this is our waffle, four link sausage, three pancakes, four or whatever we end up putting on <laughs> a bacon. This is the uh, French toast. Then we got three sunny side up eggs. Watch the ham. And then of course, don't forget the powdered sugar. It comes with the syrup like this, but David and I are gonna have some fun. I know my favorite part about this dish is that it is a food challenge. What do they win if they finish it? They have 25 minutes to finish it. If they finish it, they get it for free. Oh, wow, okay. And a Max and Louis t-shirt. You know what, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. The, What's on top? French toast stick. Like so there's French the, toast, and then there's a French toast. So you got a waffle base, you got the sausage, pancakes, bacon, French toast, egg. French toast. See, Max is like, it, it doesn't look Max like a lot. Louis, though, you're not counting carbs over No, you're going with your stretchy pants for sure. <laughs> Especially if you're going for that. I want it for the t-shirt. Challenge accepted. Oh, those pancakes, though, getting just through those, they sit in your stomach, yeah. and then you have to go through all the other bread. Yeah. Mm. I think we could do it, though. I'd put more eggs on there. There's only two eggs. I know. Yeah. Well, more protein. So it's like six eggs on there. <laughs> 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 Big news at Hollywood. New music coming out from Wolfgang Van Halen. CNN's Rick Damagella is rocking out with us. This is the latest in the Hollywood Minute. Wolfgang Van Halen has unleashed his second Mammoth WVH album. Mammoth 2 once again finds Wolfgang playing every instrument and singing every note on the album. He will have some onstage help when Mammoth WVH launches its headlining tour in Milwaukee this November. new spin on the music of Bob Marley and the Wailers is out now. Africa Unite features 10 of the reggae legends recordings infused with new collaborations from contemporary African musicians and singers. Demi Sonic are back with their first full-length album in over 20 years. The trio released the first single, The Rope, this week with the new album, Little Bit of Sun, rising November 3rd. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Fire crews worked overnight to check on hot spots after a grass fire near Bulverde Road and TPC Parkway. This is obviously a terrifying situation for homeowners in the area. Officials telling us one house destroyed after the fire spread to a nearby neighborhood. We actually sent one of our photojournalists to check on the situation this morning, but our Avery Everett spoke to neighbors who say with how dry it's been this summer, this fire comes as no surprise to them. The smoke was very heavy, very dark. A neighborhood on watch tonight after a grass fire near TPC Parkway spread more than 10 acres. The wind had shifted and drove the fire towards the neighborhood here. Nearly 50 homes evacuated, one destroyed. We brought as many trucks as fast as we could get here, but it got ahead of us. 
No one was hurt. It took six hours for crews to contain that fire. Firefighters have to deal with elevation, thick brush. Evacuations have since been lifted. Patrick Donahue says his neighborhood is lucky it didn't spread further. The properties out here, which are encouraged to stay natural, which means a lot of fuel for fires. With conditions under control, crews will still work overnight to treat hot spots. The rescue teams are just all over it. It gives you a lot of confidence. As of late last night, fire marshals were still investigating what exactly caused this fire to start. As soon as we learn that, we'll keep you updated on KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Yes, and fire danger is high not only for those of us around San Antonio, but all across the state of Texas. Here's a look at fire danger for the KSAT 12 viewing area. Fire danger is highest out west toward Del Rio, Rock Springs, Brackettville. But even around San Antonio, we've got high uh, fire danger, especially on the north side of Bear County, where you've got a little bit more brush up toward Bernie, Sisterdale, Canyon Lake, Bulverde. Of course, that fire was uh, that Avery was just reporting on is uh, just near Bulverde Road TPC Parkway on the northeast side of town. Excessive heat warnings and heat advisories for most of the state of Texas today. The dry brush plus the heat plus the drier afternoon uh, conditions and uh, some breezy winds from the southeast at 15, all going to enhance fire danger, and things are going to be hot for not only us around San Antonio, but all of South Central Texas. Excessive heat warnings and heat advisories in place. This is how hot it will be today. 86 at 10 and 93 at noon, so not too bad before noon. But once you get into the afternoon, 105 for the high temperature. This is likely going to be a record for the day today, beating a record of a uh, 104 set back in 2013. So that's some negative news. High fire danger, high temperatures. Here's some positives. All right. In the pollen count today, we've only got one allergen. It's molds and they are low. So that is some good news. But coming up, we're going to dig in a little bit deeper about things you can do to make sure to uh, not start or spread fires. And we're going to talk about this triple digit heat in the long run. Those details ahead. Max and Sarah. Sarah, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police are searching for suspects in a shooting on the city's north side. So San Antonio police say this happened just before one this morning. A fight took place at a bar across the street from Fountainwood Drive near O'Connor Road, and a male was shot twice in his stomach and once in the shoulder. Police say the suspects took off right now. There is no information on a vehicle description, and the condition of the victim is not known at this time. We'll bring you these updates when we get them. And take a look at your screen. This was a scene at the Wilshire Woods Apartments. This is on Warsbach. Around 3 this morning, crews evacuated an entire apartment building after a trash can in the laundry room was set on fire. All the residents were able to return home. No reports of extensive damage. Luckily, no injuries. Still, investigators are working, trying to figure out how this all started. Out of the campaign trail, Donald Trump returning to the campaign trail just one day after being arraigned on four new felony charges. The former president appearing at a fundraiser in Alabama saying all these indictments are actually helping him in the polls. ABC's White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks is in South Carolina where former President Trump is set to speak at a Republic event tonight. Donald Trump hitting the road, asking voters to send him back to the White House just one day after appearing in federal court to face charges that he broke his oath of office. The former president arguing voters should support him, not in spite of his mounting legal challenges, but because of them. They're trying to make it illegal to question the results of a bad election. In fact, Special counsel Jack Smith wrote in his indictment that Trump was entitled to formally challenge the results of the election through lawful and appropriate means, such as by seeking recounts or filing lawsuits, but that Trump pursued unlawful means of discounting legitimate votes and subverting the election results. Trump facing four new charges about his attempt to stay in power in the latest indictment, conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, specifically the January 6th certification of the results, obstruction of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding, and conspiracy against rights to deprive people of their right to vote and have their votes be counted. 
Trump pleaded not guilty on all counts. But Trump's campaign tactics so far working with a huge lead in the GOP primary polls. And a new ABC News Ipsos poll showed that 46% of Americans think the new charges against Trump are politically motivated, though nearly 65% think they are serious. It's unwarranted and unfair. I just think that it's a bunch of trumped up charges. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis earlier this week defending Trump in the face of those charges, though on the trail, seeming to publicly acknowledge what many Republicans rarely do, that Trump did lose the 2020 election. All those theories that were put out did not prove to be true. In your morning headlines, Florida Education Commissioner is instructing Florida school officials to teach AP psychology course in its entirety. So the letter follows the college board's announcement that Florida officials had effectively banned the course by instructing state superintendents that teaching foundational content on sexual orientation and gender identity is illegal under state law. And Mississippi's lifetime voting ban for people with disqualifying felony convictions has been struck down in a new decision from the United States Court of Appeals. The court's two to one decision will restore the right to vote for tens of thousands of people from Mississippi. The court ruled that the ban is unconstitutional and instructed the Mississippi, Mississippi Secretary of State against enforcing the terms almost 11% of adults from Mississippi were unable to vote due to these restrictions. All right, so the Republican primary debate, it is just a couple of weeks away, and so many candidates are still trying to make it, reach that threshold to be on the stage. In fact, a lot of Republican candidates, they're saying that they actually see an increase in donations every time they speak about former President Donald Trump and his arraignment. Now, the former Vice President, Mike Pence, former Arkansas Governor, Asa Hutchinson, and former Texas Rep, Will Hurd, among 2024 GOP hopefuls still trying to meet that donor threshold, all in an effort to get on the stage for August 23rd's primary debate. So according to the candidates or their campaigns, while well, their donation numbers, they surge after they speak about the former president. At the same time, however, none of the candidates have seen a jump in their polling numbers. Okay. Okay. Every week. We do this every <laughs> week. You still playing? You're uh Still playing. Okay. Uh, well, our, we have a pool here at KSAT for the Mega Millions. If you haven't heard, no one won the jackpot up to 1.5. All right. Billion dollars. If you were to win just off the cuff, what would you do? Would you I tell anyone? Uh, yeah, I would tell people. Okay. Because you, I just, I'm a horp, I'm horrible at like lying. That's fair. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. Okay. So this 1.5 billion dollars, a potential record if someone wins it next week. While no one matched all the numbers, seven tickets across seven different states, each won a million. So if you did play last night and you're upset you didn't win at all, still check the ticket because you still could have won a million. I don't know about you. I would love a million dollars. Yeah, I would love. I mean, some, sometimes you win 10000 50000 $24 if you're in the pool at KSAT. Yeah, KSAT has our own pool here. Wait, did we win $24 or did we win on 24 tickets? No, $24. Oh. Yeah. Mm. It's still good, though. You roll that yeah. over. Just the video over. ran out, so we can stop talking about it. <laughs> Time now, 840, 81 degrees. Okay, college move in right around the corner, and we have the essentials that should be on your shopping list. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. So we talked about fire dangers. We talked about 100 degree day after 100 degree day. There is so much going on. We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. 81 degrees at 8.44. Sarah, it's not looking too good for the next couple of days. No, not for the next five to seven days. We're at least going to be at 104 or hotter, mm. Sarah. Yeah. and to add on to it, uh, fire danger is high today, so keep that in mind. You know, we did have that one fire out near to Bulverde Road on the northeast side, so fires can happen and they can spread easily given the dry conditions and the hot conditions. So just a few reminders for you today. No campfires or burn piles. Try avoiding tools that create sparks like chainsaws. This one's important. Disposing of cigarettes properly. Make sure they are fully extinguished before you dispose of them. Don't drag trailer chains. And then this last one, do not park vehicles on grass because that could easily spark a fire. Now, as we look at the weather, 
weather setup. There are some showers across the panhandle and even some severe weather across the central plains this morning. But with the heat high firmly in place, all of that rain is going to stay to our north and it's going to be hot across Texas. Take a look at forecast highs from Las Vegas all the way to Texas. Temperatures well above 100 degrees. Even up in Oklahoma City today, it's going to be 102 in spite of the fact that they're dealing with a little bit of rain this morning. So this is a potent heat high that's going to stick with us in the coming days. Tomorrow will be at 104. Most of the state of Texas will be hot. In fact, ERCOT has issued a weather watch for tomorrow and Monday. So far, supply is forecast to meet demand, but still something we'll be keeping our eye on. And then even Unfortunately, here in Texas, there are going to be some folks that get rain, like the Dallas Fort Worth area Monday and Tuesday, but it's going to not make it to us. We're still going to be 105 on Monday and Tuesday. And then that heat high, in fact, strengthens and moves overhead through the middle of the week. And so we'll be dealing with near record heat just about every single day. Today, 105 for the high. That will beat a record set back in 100 of uh, 104 set back in 2013. In fact, in 2013, this time we had a streak of record high temperatures that were going to be challenging uh, throughout the coming days. So even on Wednesday, we'll be close to that record set back in 1953 of 106. So enjoy the cooler part of the day, even though it's still warm. It's 80 degrees outside, not a cloud in the sky. Southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. Good morning in Eagle Pass. It's 81 degrees, 81 in Pleasanton, 82 in Beeville, 82 in Gonzales, 78 in New Braunfels and 77 in Kerrville. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast already in the 90s by 11 in the afternoon. We'll be getting into the triple digits forecasting 105 for the high temperature right around 5 6 p.m. We got to 105 yesterday. We're going to do it again today as well. Here's a look at neighborhood highs, though. The the average high temperature this time of year is 97. It's going to be 105 in Bandera, 102 in Comfort, 104 Canyon Lake, 106 at Stinson, 105 in Seguin, 105 in Hondo, and 104 in Utopia. The only saving grace is that in the afternoon, our humidity will be low. So we will not have to deal with the heat index value today. Still, though, whatever way you look at it, with the humidity or not, 105 is hot. And we'll be at 105. Uh, for the next several days. On average, our last 100 degree day is August uh, 26th, but it's it's going to be hot for us for the foreseeable future. Perhaps some relief next weekend, but that is a big maybe. We have to allow for the forecast to settle down before we know for sure uh, for next weekend. Hey, coming up in the forecast, Sarah, I mentioned that ERCOT is going to be on a weather watch mm -hmm. Sunday and Monday. I'll show you the forecast supply and demand for those days as well. All right. Thank you, Sarah. 847, 81 degrees from cars to baby monitors. Several items are being recalled. We'll let you know about those. Taking a look outside at Trans Guide, not really seeing any issues out on the roads this morning. There is that construction, some lanes that will be closed at the I-10-410 interchange. Um, other than that, anything else happens, we will let you know about it. Nearly 13,000 baby monitors recalled because of the potential for overheating. Phillips Advent digital baby monitors noting that the overheating of the monitor may lead to burn risks. Phillips has received 23 reports of the baby monitors overheating, including seven reports of minor injuries. And if you own a newish Hyundai or Kia, you may want to be careful where you park at several models of cars and SUVs, potential fire dangers. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz explains why it is in today's recall roundup. Hyundai and Kia are warning owners of 92,000 newer vehicles to park them outside because of a fire danger. Hyundai is recalling certain 2023 and 2024 Palisades and some Tucson, Sonata, Elantra, and Kona vehicles. Kia's recall affects Soul, Sportage, and Seltos vehicles. An electronic controller and an oil pump may overheat. Owners will get a letter next month. Federal regulators warn this bike helmet may not protect your head in a crash. They say the SQM helmets fail to meet safety standards. They were sold from March 2022 through last January on Amazon. 
and certain batches of Tidemi birth control pills are recalled. The FDA warns the pills may have reduced effectiveness in preventing pregnancy. The expiration dates are January or September 2024. The company is telling patients to go ahead and keep taking them, but contact their doctor for an alternative. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 8.53, 81 degrees. A lot of schools headed back to school next week and some important back to school bashes, some giveaways happening around the Alamo City. We'll let you know. Well, welcome back. Several back to school events happening throughout the weekend today. District 2 hosting a back to school event and resource fair at the Duseum from 6 to 8.30 p.m. We got free backpacks, school supplies, haircuts, even vaccinations all provided on site. And then District 10 will also be hosting their annual back to school backpack and supplies giveaway from 9 to new at Blessed Angels Community Center. That's on Nacogdoches Road. There will be free backpacks, school supplies, diapers and food while supplies last. All right. And hey, how about our Spurs? Spurs Sports Entertainment hosting their second annual back to school bash at the AT&T Center today, 2 to 5 p.m. Parents, students, teachers all invited. It is a free event open to the public. There's going to be health checks available, haircuts if you're interested. You have to register for this one to attend. If you are interested in registering, hanging out with our San Antonio Spurs, just head to KSAT.com. That's a big one. I know it always draws a really big crowd. Oh, yeah. Register online before you go, though. Yeah. Time now, just about 8.56, 82 degrees. We'll be right back.